Now, it's been about 10 months since the initial release of any RTX hardware by NVIDIA. And honestly, we still don't have many ray tracing games available. But with all of the announcements at E3 of new games that are going to support ray tracing, I decided to test the cheapest RTX graphics card on the market and see whether or not it can actually RTX. Now, before we get any further, look, I got some Linus Tech Tips swag in what is hopefully not too obvious an attempt at getting a cheap shout out. Someone notice me! Now currently the cheapest RTX graphics card on the market retails for about $350, but you can quite regularly get them on sale for about $320, which in my opinion is quite a good deal. But what we're gonna do today is see whether or not this occasionally $320 graphics card actually has a perceptible difference in ray tracing performance compared to something that doesn't have RTX in the name, like for example a GTX 1660 Ti. In other words, is the minimum according to Nvidia actually enough to make a difference in ray tracing performance? Now how I'm going to test how much of a difference the RT cores makes is by actually running all of the games with ray tracing settings off and then with ray tracing settings on on both of the graphics cards. And then I'm going to calculate the percentage performance difference between the two runs and then compare the two graphics cards that way. Now the first title we're going to test today is obviously going to be Battlefield 5 because that's the first like ray trace capable game. But in my opinion the ray tracing functionality in the game is really badly implemented and it's the kind of thing they just stay on as an afterthought at the end of the development cycle so that Nvidia could have something to be like look we have ray tracing somewhere and they didn't even hide that fact very well I mean they patched the functionality into the game after the actual release and honestly this whole thing kind of reminds me of the release of DirectX 10 back in like 2008 I think it was there was the 8 800 series of graphics cards which it cost quite a lot more than the previous generation they did perform a lot better but you did pay for that performance and there weren't really DirectX 10 games around for you to test your new expensive graphics card with and then we finally got a game called like I think it was Lost Planet which performed really badly and it also had like really lame DirectX 10 implementation. It was again that kind of thing where like it seemed like it was stapled on at the end of the development cycle and it would bring even the 8800 Ultra to its knees which was a very expensive graphics card at the time. Honestly the whole RTX launch is very similar to DirectX 10 back in the day. Let me know if you want to see a more dedicated video to that topic where we kind of discuss the similarities but I'll get back to the RTX 2060. The second game we're going to test is called Metro Exodus, which in my opinion has a better ray tracing implementation because it doesn't only have reflections through ray tracing, it also uses shadows through ray tracing, um, but it doesn't have proper full ray tracing yet. In fact, we don't have a triple A game that has full ray tracing support at the moment. It's been 10 months and we still don't. I could also use Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but honestly, I don't want to have to buy Shadow of the Tomb Raider because I'm never going to play it. And the, and the ray tracing functionality in that is also really bad. It just uses the ray tracing to supplement shadows. But we have one game here which I think is a very good test of how much of a difference the RT cores actually makes. And that's, weirdly enough, a 20 year old game called Quake 2. Now the reason I think Quake 2 is a very good use case is because the rest of the game is really easy to render. The only taxing part of the game is the actual ray tracing in it. And and the game uses global illumination ray tracing which means it's a proper ray tracing implementation. And then finally, just for fun, I'm also going to involve the ray tracing demo of Minecraft. Now, we do have to bear in mind with the results from these tests that the guy, it's a single person who's doing the development for the Minecraft ray tracing setup. And honestly, I don't even think he actually has access to RTX hardware. All of the demos he shows is with a GTX 970. So we have to bear in mind that it's not really optimized to use the RT cores necessarily. And that kind of will be one of the main points that I make at the end of this video. 
So with that out of the way, let's have a look at the actual benchmarks. <laughs> oh my god, NVIDIA. <laughs> okay. Now with Battlefield 5, things aren't looking good for NVIDIA's marketing because at 1080p ultra settings with no ray tracing settings on, with a GTX 1660 Ti, you get 82 frames per second. And then when you turn DXR on, on medium settings, which is weirdly the lowest RTX setting, you get 64 frames per second, which is a 22% frame rate cost for ray tracing tracing on a non-RTX graphics card. <laughs> And then when you get to the RTX 2060 performance Nvidia, you done screwed up with this demo because you get 96 frames per second with no RTX on and you get 74 frames per second with RTX on, on medium. Now, if you're good at maths, you'll realize that that's a 23% frame rate hit. So with RTX hardware, you're getting a bigger hit in frame rate than you are with non-RTX capable hardware. <laughs> Honestly, you should have just kept the product in development for a year longer so that you have software that properly utilizes it because honestly, this is embarrassing. And now let's move on to Metro Exodus, which is looking a lot better for, for NVIDIA's marketing team here. So with all of the settings at Ultra at 1080p with no ray tracing on, on the GTX 1660 Ti, you're getting 47 frames per second. And then when you switch ray tracing on at high settings, which again, weirdly is the lowest RTX setting, just call it low. I mean, why are you calling it high? Uh, you're getting 19 frames per second. That's a pretty tough performance hit of about 60 frames per second on non-RTX hardware. And then with the RTX 2060, when you have non-ray tracing settings at 1080p Ultra, you get 55 frames per second. And then when you turn ray tracing on at high, you get 44 frames per second, which is 20% performance cost for ray tracing. And honestly, that's pretty good. That's the kind of payoff I'd be willing to do, I kind of think, especially for a game that's about like the visual fidelity like Metro Exodus. And then I did another test at ultra ray tracing settings, which got me 38 frames per second, which means there's a 31% performance cost from no ray tracing at all, as opposed to the 60% on lower RTX settings on the 1660 Ti. And honestly, things are looking quite a lot better for Nvidia's marketing team here. But I do have to say, I couldn't really tell the difference. I sat looking at each run of the benchmark and really tried very hard to identify the difference between ray tracing on and ray tracing off. And honestly, I really couldn't tell. So that means you're giving on RTX hardware a 20% or a 31% performance hit for visual fidelity that honestly I can't tell. I'll play more of Metro Exodus and I'll see if I can notice eventually and I'll let you know in the comment section below, but it's really difficult to see the difference. Now let's move on to what is in my opinion the most important test that I'm gonna be looking at today, which is Quake 2's performance. Now I didn't actually do a non-ray traced run before testing the ray tracing so that I can actually compare the results because honestly my microwave can run Quake 2 at 200 frames per second at 4K and it's gonna be more of a test of like CPU bottleneck, so it's not gonna be an accurate representation of how those graphics cards perform in relation to each other with no ray tracing on. So I just went straight into ray traced benchmarks. And with the GTX 1660 Ti, with all of the ray tracing settings on, except for global illumination, which I left off, I got 15 frames per second, which is brutal on a 20 year old game. But it looked a lot better with the RTX 2060, which got 52 frames per second. Now that is already a very impressive performance jump. But what makes it a lot more impressive is the fact that when I was running the benchmark with the RTX 2060, I actually had global illumination on ultra, on the highest setting available. So it means that there was a lot more ray tracing happening and it performed significantly better. With the same settings, it got about 80 frames per second. So honestly, this is a very good win for the marketing team over at Nvidia because it shows that those, those RT cores are actually doing something. Now let's get to the final benchmark, which is the Minecraft demo. And honestly, I think that most effectively illustrates the point that I'm gonna make with this video, which I actually think, let me make that point now before we look at the benchmarks. Now, I think the biggest problem with the ray tracing implementation at the moment is the software implementation. It's very new. The developers are still trying to figure out how to use this hardware and get the software to interact with it properly. And the thing is, this is very clear with Battlefield 5 as well, because there's no difference in performance hit between 
between RT-capable hardware and non-RT-capable hardware, which means we might be getting a much more compelling reason for ray tracing over the next couple of months with Doom Eternal and the new Call of Duty game and Cyberpunk and so on. But again, we don't know that for a fact. That's just speculation based on a couple of tests that we have available for us today. Because again, when looking at Minecraft, you're getting 48 frames per second on the GTX 1660 Ti, and you're getting 52 frames per second on the RTX 2060. And honestly, that performance difference could be put down to the more powerful GPU in the RTX 2060. And that kind of just shows you that the developers need to learn how to implement the software on this hardware. And that hasn't happened after 10 months, which means that we're still gonna have to wait a bit. However, nobody buys a new graphics card every generation. And if you are in the market for a graphics card today, I would at least consider the ray tracing functionality. So if you have to choose between like a Navi GPU, the 5700 XT compared to the RTX 2070, I actually think if they cost the same and perform similarly, go for the RTX capable one. Because we do have some tests that show that if the software is properly implemented, there is gonna be an appreciable performance difference between an RTX GPU and a non-RTX GPU. And because we know that the next generation of con consoles is going to support ray tracing, ray tracing is the future. It is gonna be something that's gonna be implemented in a more widespread fashion. Because honestly, if the console are doing it that's what all the games are gonna do and honestly when not taking RTX into account at all the RTX 2060 at about $320 I think is quite a good deal it's not an amazing deal but it is a very powerful graphics card that even when you don't look at the RTX functionality I think is a pretty good buy anyway I'll do a dedicated video on that graphics card so we'll actually discuss the value in more depth but I think at $350 it's too expensive but if you get it for closer to $300, it makes a lot more sense. Anyway, with that, I think it brings me to the end of this video. If you like this video, share it with your friends so that you can discuss the kind of performance difference between RTX hardware and non-RTX hardware. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Like and follow my Instagram and Twitter and all of those things. And until the next video, bye-bye.